One group that holds tremendous influence in Saskatchewan politics is the alt-right, as well as a large population of hardline traditionalists from a variety of different religious groups. And Scott Moe is very eager to cater the most extreme among them, and he's doing so through transphobic policies. It's cruel, it's petty, and it's attacking vulnerable youth in an attempt to change the channel from his many, many ongoing failures and serious issues facing Saskatchewan's people. So a lot of this began with Scott Moe's push for the Parents' Bill of Rights in Saskatchewan. The idea that teachers should not be able to call a student by their preferred names or pronouns without parental consent. And this is problematic for so many different reasons that we've talked about in the past, but essentially it boils down to taking away the child's right to control over their own identity. They get to choose what they're called and who gets to find out about it. This is not about medical care. It's not about surgeries. It's just names and pronouns. And a reminder, if your kid doesn't want to talk to you about their preferred names and pronouns, the problem is not the kid. The problem is you. You've created a situation where your kid doesn't feel safe telling you. Ask yourself why that might be. But also in a lot of situations, students will tell classmates or teachers before they tell their parents because it feels lower stakes, because they're not quite ready to tell their parents, because it feels like a bigger decision to do that. And this is why the Saskatchewan government's being sued by the University of Regina's Pride Organization and EGAL Canada, as well as a bunch of interveners. The law's unconstitutional. But that didn't stop Scott Moe, because whether it's constitutional or not, he's going to do it. He used the notwithstanding clause to waive that section of the Constitution in order to let him directly bully trans kids. And it was entirely just to save his own hide in the Lumsden Morse by-election against the Sask United Party. But it doesn't end there. Because the story that I want to talk about in particular happened this week, and it shows the level of base pettiness and cruelty that illustrates how Scamo has absolutely no limits. There is no low to which he will not sink. Because he, along with a prominent garbage-based Saskatchewan Instagram account, I'm not even joking, Regina's version of like Yegwave or Six Buzz is a literal garbage company. They circulated the story and Mo responded to it. It was about the use of change rooms in the Balgoni school. The story circulated that two young individuals who identify as girls were changing in the girls' change room at Balgoni School. There are no specifics of the complaint shared, but it appears that nobody was hurt, nothing happened, just somebody didn't like the fact that two trans kids existed, so they complained about it. And before you start panicking about trans people in the bathrooms, we have literal peer-reviewed studies that show this is not an issue. There are no systemic problems with trans people in bathrooms. There is no statistical evidence to support this at all. Yes, there are problems in public bathrooms, but they are not driven by trans and non-binary people. They just want to pee. But that didn't stop Mo from announcing that his first order of business, his day one policy, would be a policy restricting students to a change room based on their assigned sex at birth. That's priority number one. Not affordability, not healthcare, and not education, just attacking trans kids. But the NDP replied to this shortly after, and what they shared was beyond horrifying. Because those two kids who are identified by Scott Moe and targeted in this announcement, the two 10-year-old trans youth who are being directly targeted by the most powerful man in the province, they're the kids of an NDP candidate. Now, the NDP are asking that that candidate not be specifically identified, and I'm going to respect that. But that didn't stop a number of right-wing outlets from outing that candidate and his kids, including circulating their photos. This is a direct targeting of two 10-year-old children of a political candidate. I would love somebody to explain to me how they think that is an ethical decision for the leader of the province. Whether you believe in trans rights or not, if you genuinely believe that the best course of action is the public attack of two 10-year-old kids of your political opponent, because of how they live their lives. You're a monster. Kids are off limits. But for Scott Moe, they don't appear to be, because he has no limits and no scruples. There is nobody he will not attack in order to serve his cynical political ends. And that's what makes him a uniquely dangerous politician in Canada. 